Hey golfers, it's Dave from fit to golf This is an update to my review of the Maltby STI-2 from the Golf Works. When I first did this review, it was during the lockdown of the pandemic and I couldn't go to the golf course to try it out. They were closed. I couldn't go to the range to watch ball flight. They were closed. So my review basically consisted of hitting balls into the backyard net and collecting data with my Mevo. Well, since then, I've built myself a set. I've played a couple rounds with them. I've collected more data. So I think I can offer a bit more detail in this updated review. So let's get started. Now, if you haven't watched the original review, I'll try to remember to put a link in the description below where I talk more about the looks and some of the design features of the club. And I'll touch on some of those in this video as well, but you might want to check that out. So I built this set of irons to go into my summer bag. And those of you who watch the channel are probably thinking, Dave, what'd you do with your TS2s? I mean, you love those clubs. You gave it a great rating. And it's true, I do love the TS2. They feel great, they look great, they're very forgiving, but not quite in the way that I needed them to be forgiving. So I'm still fighting a steep swing. I'm taking some online lessons and that's going well. I'll probably do a video about that soon. Um, but I wanted something that would have a little bit wider sole, a little more effective bounce um, that would help in case I come into the ball steep. And uh, what I really like about the STI-2 is the uh, sole is a little bit wider and it also has a bevel to it, so it's less likely to dig. Uh, also, the, the TS-2s are gapped at about five degrees between clubs, and that left me, you know, kind of with uncomfortable yardages uh, a lot of the time. So I wanted something that was gapped a little bit more traditionally. And so the STI-2s are gapped at basically four degrees between clubs. That also flows really nicely into the wedges that I'm using. So I've got a five through gap wedge set. The gap wedge is 48 degrees, flows really nicely into my TSW wedges, which are 52 and 56. And then finally, I just like having new clubs. Uh, and I've made a commitment to only have three sets of clubs. I have these in my, what I call my summer bag. I have my STIOSs in my fall, early spring bag. And then I have uh, Alpha RX1s in my Sunday bag. Three sets of clubs is, that's definitely the sweet spot. So let me get into the details of this build. All the heads came in weighing within the tolerance that the golf work states but a couple of them were just a little bit light and I really wanted to make that really nice seven gram progression between club head weights. So I did add two gram tip weights to the seven iron and the eight iron. I paired these with, you, you guessed it, something from the Nippon uh, NS Pro GH line. I went with the NS Pro 1050 GH in R flex and I hard stepped them. If you're not familiar with this shaft, uh, these are discrete lengths, so they make a specific shaft for each club head. Um, they come a, about an inch long, so you have a little play in terms of butt trimming. You don't tip trim, not even the parallels, and uh, they're constant weight. They all weigh 105 grams, and I like that weight for myself. The reason I wanted to go with the R-Flex hard stepped is that I found that when I was using the 1050 GHSs in my uh, TS2, clubs, um, I, I kind of, in order to draw it, I felt like I had to manipulate it. I felt like I had to kind of get handsy with it. And as a result, I would overdraw it. So uh, I wanted something that was a little softer that would kind of release um, more naturally for a draw. And that's why I went with the R-Flex, but I hard stepped them. The NS Pro lined uh, GH tend to run about a half flex soft. So if I had not hard step them, I just installed them as they were intended. Uh, these would have came in at a CPM of uh, kind of a firm senior, and uh, I wanted to get about a third of a flex more than that. So by hard stepping it, which basically means I put the five iron in the six uh, iron shaft and the six iron head in the seven iron shaft and so on, uh, I was able to get these to play like a soft regular, and I'm really happy with how that came out. I cut these to standard length, so the five iron is 38 inches, and then it goes down by half an inch uh, per club. Um, with uh, this shaft and a grip one reduced taper grip, 60 grams, the swing weight at D2 plus or minus one. So 
So I'm going to put up some swings of uh, footage I took when I uh, did a gapping session uh, with these irons. Uh, hopefully you can hear uh, the sound that uh, the club makes when it strikes the ball. I'll try not to talk uh, too much over it. And I'll put up the numbers of uh, uh, carry and uh, club head speed and ball speed uh, for each club. As I said in my initial review, these feel really good. They're not overly punishing if you have a miss hit. There's enough feedback that you can tell where on the club you miss hit it. So it's not like a just a clunky shovel. There's a vibration reducing insert in the um, longer clubs and that really helps to promote feel. And I found that I was getting a really nice ball flight, nice, nice high ball flight, but uh, stopping quickly and uh, really happy with the performance. As I mentioned, and I should have put this in the earlier part of the video, there is a uh, silica anti-vibration insert in the back of the cavity just behind the sweet spot in the longer irons. So uh, for me in the five, six, and seven, uh, this helps to promote feel. And I, I really think it, it does something uh, significant. Now in terms of how this performed on the course, I, I really like this, this sole design. I thought it would be most helpful hitting out of the rough, that it would add some effective bounce and, and help get uh, the, you know, the ball out of the rough. But actually I found that it, it really performs best in tight lies. Uh, it, it, rather than digging, it just kind of just gently bounces so that you can still, you can take a divot, but it's not overly deep and the ball uh, comes out nicely. Uh, I, w I would be, you know, lies I would be worried about sculling it this this club got it uh, up in the air really really nicely so I went over the pros and cons in the first video um, there really were no cons um, you know it's it's in an inexpensive club it's under twenty dollars a head um, I was able to get these shafts for around ten dollars a piece you pair that with an inexpensive grip then you can build a, a set of clubs for thirty five dollars each which is excellent um, I'm even more impressed with the performance since I've been able to take it out on the course and spend some more time with it on the range and uh, I'm really happy with how it's performing. In my initial review I gave uh, these my highest rating. I was just so impressed with how they felt and looked. Um, I gave it an eagle and there's absolutely no reason for me to go back on that rating. This is still a solid eagle. I highly recommend it. I'm having fun with them already. Check them out. Uh, build yourself a set. They're, they're terrific. All right, so let me know what you think. Post your comments, subscribe, all that stuff. Uh, get out there, play some golf, stay positive.